Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. I think we stumbled into Thursday, March 4th, 2022. So I'm taking a break from uh, the deconstruction project from hell, tearing down my tiny house. It's March 4th. I got one more month there loading the truck one month from today. But uh, as long as I have one more month down here in the oasis of freedom on this gorgeous spring day, uh, I was going to, uh, I was going to get into this long involved piece from the Fear Stream Media the number three story on the planet today, surprisingly, uh, from good old USA Today, Yahoo News picking this story as the number three biggest story on the planet. It could happen tomorrow. Experts know disaster upon disaster looms for West Coast. So, uh... Anyway, I'm gonna just uh, <laughs> this is just this is just the first few paragraphs of the fear stream media. Now that we're no longer panicked about the C word, uh, and if the uh, Putin panic isn't enough, then why don't we go to the old fall back in the panic stream media earthquakes and wildfires and floods and droughts but it is the elevators that worry earthquake engineering expert Keith Porter the most scientists say a massive quake could strike the San Francisco Bay Area at any moment and when it does the city can expect it to be slammed with a force equal to hundreds hundreds of atomic bombs. Porter said the shaking will quickly cut off power in many areas. That means unsuspecting people will be trapped between floors and elevators without backup power. Yes, at peak commute times, the number of those trapped could be in the thousands. To escape the survivors of the initial quake will need the help of firefighters with specialized training and tools, but their rescuers won't come, at least not right away. Firefighters will be battling infernos that could outnumber the region's fire engines. Running water will be in short supply. Cell phone service may not work at all. The aftershocks will keep coming, and the electricity could remain off for weeks. That means people are dead in those elevators, Porter said. Yes, dead people in elevators. Let, let me tell you where dead people in elevators are, are going to be on the list of concerns when that big one really does hit uh, the Bay Area. You know, I was there in Santa Cruz, a, actually working at the Century 21 office. We were the closest office uh, to the epicenter of the, uh, the October 17th Loma Prieta earthquake. 7.1 magnitude struck at 5.04 p.m. in the middle of rush hour on October 17th, 1989. It was probably the most terrifying 15 seconds of my uh, of my life. It's unbelievable that only 67 people died in that. If you had seen the rubble in downtown San Francisco and um, in the right splat in the heart of Santa Cruz, unbelievable that only 67 people died but that was a 7.1 I never remember 
hearing a story about anyone trapped in an elevator. But anyway, guys, uh, this thing goes on and on and on and on. This story in USA Today, it, it is some classic Doomer porn, but, uh, y y you know, there's only so much doom you can put in one fear stream media. But, uh, anyway, I just, don't, I just don't have the heart or the time for it. Uh, so I went over here to the comments, uh, looking at the comments to that essay by Gail Tverberg that I read yesterday about renewables are not going to save the planet. And I was thrilled to see that right next to each other uh, were two of my favorite commentators here in the Doomosphere. We have Andy the Gardener and Marty McCorkle right together on the comments pages of Collapse Chronicles. I, I have had more than one person uh, that I interviewed tell me we have particularly intelligent commentary in the comments page and I do like to try to keep the you know the uh, IQ level of Collapse Chronicles. Now Andy not being too verbose you know Andy the gardener is uh, I think he's kind of handed over the the uh, reins uh, to Marty McCorkle uh, don't know where the long rambling polemics, but what does Andy the Gardener have to say? <clears throat> Intermittency is the least of the problems of renewable energy. The problems are far more fundamental than that. I am not going to go into the basics here. Damn it. I guess you'll have to do that some other day. I will do that on Extinction Rebellion's Facebook post whenever the ridiculous lie of an eco-energy salvation comes up. I feel my blood starting to boil. It is becoming one of the greatest lies ever told. The bright green lie of the, this uh, bullshit energy uh, revolution, this mythical transition away from fossil fuels, uh, that number one ain't gonna happen, and number two, if it does happen, it will only take us out of the frying pan into the fire. Uh, but anyway, Marty McCorkle uh, got his dander up. This is Marty McCorkle with his dander up. Take it away, Marty McCorkle. What is your response to Gail Tverberg trying to tell you that renewables are not going to save the planet? But wait! Renewables are going to save our energy bacon, right? I don't want to shiver in the dark. That's for the poor unwashed to do. Not middle class me. I wouldn't know how to shiver if I tried. I've never had to. And the only candles I own are for birthdays, with each birthday candle not affording me even two pages worth of reading of the latest New York Times bestseller before burning out the candles, not me or the book. I'm not interested in any silly energy crisis, so if a blackout shows up, I'll refuse its delivery and will promptly write my congressperson a very pointed letter insisting that the blackout be sent somewhere else, like a working class neighborhood. Renewables simply must save us. So I am sticking to my energy crisis denial until its wheels fall off. Climate change crisis is fine because it's a long way off. 
but an energy crisis breathing down our necks like Biden sniffing a little girl. In fact, I'm expecting renewable battery operated jets to be invented any moment now, or chances are that I will never get to see Venice. And if Venice is removed from my bucket list, I'll be asking industrial civilization to scooch over on the crash couch so that I can collapse right next to it from my sheer disappointment in not having coffee at San Marcos Square. Riddle me this, why does this planet, that is the big blue marble we are sitting on in case you are a Jordan Peterson follower, why does this planet have to be so finite when my plans are built along the lines of the infinite. Sure, people die in wildfires or military occupations, and of course, thoughts and prayers, take as many as you want, they are free. But life is so unfair to me with these stupid limits to growth. I am so going to bury Earth in my Yelp review so that no one will ever think to visit this planet again. I don't want to consume less. I want more, more stuff, more energy, more stable climate, more pangolin pies, and way more people right alongside me mooring like nobody's business. If this planet is finite, it deserves to be thrown in the dumpster just like we are doing, then lit on fire with, a, with its fussy limits on how much we can consume of it. So it's up to you, Mars. You better have super nice shopping malls under construction and golf courses. I am so over being told that I can't have everything I want, which includes coincidentally everything, plus the latest accessories and upgrades. Renewables must provide as much energy as we have now, or I and many others are going to become very, very unpleasant Karens. Yes, we do not want Marty McCorkle or Andy the Gardener becoming unpleasant Karens on this absolutely gorgeous day. But anyway, uh, get out there and enjoy the West Coast before the next, I don't know, uh, killer earthquake killer wildfire, killer flood, uh, killer drought, I guess, uh, killer, killer what? <laughs> the list of disasters uh, awaiting the west coast of the United States. But here in the oasis of freedom, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day and uh, while I wait for the sea levels to rise here in the Oasis of Freedom and send uh, this whole Disney World underwater where it belongs, I gotta get uh, back to saving my tiny houses and moving them to New York, baby. Mmm. All right. I'm back. To work. Bye guys.